Good day everyone! Today we are going to discuss about the 4As or 5As teaching model. Based on Cobb's experiential learning theory, this aims to approach the child holistically. It also acknowledges the past schemes of the student and integrating it to a new one. This is also learner-centered, wherein the teachers act as facilitators, and it's also applicable to all subjects. The 4As or 5As model focuses on the four main components to help teachers achieve goals in the classroom. These 4As stand for Activity, Analysis, Abstraction, and Application. Activity or Activate Prior Knowledge will bring understanding to what the learners already know and clarity to what learners should learn further. This is also the part wherein you can let students discuss or write about what they already know and that is related to the lesson. Analysis is the next one and this also means acquiring new knowledge. This is a more in-depth understanding of the lesson. It is another phase where students will process and classify what is valid or not. In this one, this is the teaching part wherein the new information is presented and that the students should be learning or acquiring this information. The third A is abstraction. The teacher on this part will now focus entirely on the lesson being presented and ask more lead questions to lead students in reinforcing what they know and should know more. This is the part also wherein the students could practice what they have learned. And the fourth one would be application. The word itself describes the stage as bringing the student to a more practical way of using how are they going to use what they have learned and thinking of new ways on how it can be improved. Earlier, we have mentioned that this is a 4 A's or 5 A's teaching model. And the fifth A that we are going to add in the 4 A's that we have already discussed would be assessment. Assessment for learning, assessment of learning, and assessment as learning. Assessment is a test or understanding. Uh, this is how you can tell if learning is happening. Students are tested to see how much they have learned and determine if there are gaps in understanding. To add more in this one, this format or this model will best affect learning when we facilitate more than placing the lesson in their heads. We aim to keep them at pace but not to the point of dragging them to what uh, they already know and what we would like them to achieve. And last but not the least, of course, is the mastery of the lesson. When the teacher or when we are prepared and has mastered the lesson, it will surely surprise you with good results. And of course, we would like to show you lesson applications of this model. So we would like to show you the elementary, the high school, and the tertiary level application of this one. This is Krisha Arshage, and I'll be explaining how the 5A approach could be applied when teaching STEM. Alright, first things first, definitions. As you all know, STEM is the incorporation of four subjects, namely science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But did you know that aside from STEM, there are other two strands of these advanced educational systems they are steam the a and steam stands for arts and the second one is stream the r in stream stands for reading so these other two tracks incorporate humanities subjects okay moving on first in the 5a is activity in a stem classroom activities are important and they should relate to real world problems during the activity teachers are just facilitators and the students do the brainstorming for the answers to these real world problems teachers could also ask questions that will lead to the topic of the day all right second is analysis this is where students discuss how they arrived at the possible answers to the real world problems presented during the activity relating students answers from the previous activity to their own experiences 
makes the lesson more valuable and longer lasting. So the third A, which is abstraction, and in simpler terms, is the discussion where the lesson is fully explained. It's important to show samples or live demonstrations. It is also important to use educational technology or ed tech, especially when we're dealing with research-based topics. Fourth is the application. So in a STEM classroom, it is encouraged to work in teams since it is necessary to work in teams when they go out in the field or in real life. And the last is to use the engineering design process to solve problems presented to you. Lastly, in the 5 way approach is the assessment. There are three things important in the assessment for STEM students. First is practicality of the assessment. It is better to use practical assessment tools and guidelines. Second is feedback. Feedback is important since it enables students to move forward in their learning. Giving feedback should also positively affect a student by empowering him or her to receive and act on feedback. And lastly is to redesign. So if there is feedback, of course, the teacher would be able to pinpoint the things for improvement. And that is where the redesigning part of the assessment comes. So once the team or the student has learned from each other or from the teacher, they can then redesign to produce better output or product. I hope you can apply this to your own classroom, even if it's not a STEM classroom. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Good day. This is JP Dizon, a lecturer from one of the universities here in our province. Just recently, I was able to make use of the four A's in the five A's teaching models. The five A being activity analysis, abstraction, application, and assessment. If you're going to ask me what the four A's in the five A's teaching models are for me, it's actually very similar with the traditional lesson plan we already know. So this starts with the motivational activity, leading to the concepts which you need to build up for the discussion. So in that case, it is very apparent with the five A's model, which is activity, analysis, and the abstraction. Allow me to present to you now my discussion with the subject, Building and Enhancing Literacies Across the Curriculum. This is a subject required of education students. In the first A of this discussion was the activity. The activity was to tell what my students think of the songs I've played. So I've played numerous songs in this discussion, and I've asked them what they feel and what they think about the songs. In that case, my students have given me different responses varying from emotions and varying experiences as well to which they associate with the songs. After I gathered all of those responses, it actually led to another question, which is, what if I tell you that there is a problem with these songs, issues that they need to uncover. So after I've said that uh, question, or after I've asked that question, my students started to think of a different response and started to take another approach to how they interpret the song. So the second A for the five A's teaching model is actually analysis. When we tried to analyze further the concepts we already have brought up, my students have started telling me different issues they've uncovered in the songs they've listened to. Issues like women objectification, sexualization, the patriarchy, and the like. Once we were able to efficiently analyze and create the concept, it led now to the abstraction part, which is the third A for the five A's teaching models. In the abstraction part, I was able now to determine the concept to my students that the topic being discussed is actually critical literacy. And what happened from the activity and the analysis part of the discussion was actually letting them experience themselves how the concept is and how it works. So my students now, based on the activity, already know what critical literacy is. So critical literacy is the undermining and the uncovering of ideologies in literary pieces or in any other materials that they consume. Also, based on the activity, there is now a knowledge to my students that critical literacy is the questioning of social ideologies and social conditions apparent to different materials, just like literary pieces. So with that being said, my students are actually English majors and I've tried to contextualize how critical literacy will be applied to, to their lives and how they will be applying critical literacy to their classrooms in the future. So I've tried contextualizing the next questions in the abstraction part 
into how they would be teaching literature. Because it's a very important role for an English teacher to also elicit responses from the students, not just only knowing the characters, but also knowing why the characters were acting that way. Say, for example, the question, who are the characters? How would you make that question more complicated to make the students or your students think critically? After knowing what critical literacy was, we now proceed with the next step, which is the application. So in the application part, I've let my students go to a Jamboard session and I've let them collate all of their questions that would elicit critical literacy from their students. We made use of one literary piece, which is Once Upon a Time by Nadine Gordimer. And in that literary piece, I've let my students ask and create questions themselves. Here are some samples for you to look at and how the application part was done. So the last step for the five A's teaching models is the assessment. In this discussion, I've made use of the 3 to one assessment involving three things they've learned in critical literacy, two things they will apply on their classroom in the future, and the one thing they're still interested on to research about critical thinking and critical literacy. I hope you've learned something from my discussion. I am JV Dizon. Thank you for listening to my PED Talk. Here's from Veronica for another classroom application of the 5 A's teaching model. Good day! So now we will look into how the 4 A's or 5 A's model is applied in the elementary education. But first, let's have a recap. The five components of 5 A's model are activity, analysis, abstraction, application, and assessment. Now, elementary education is also known as the primary education. It is the first stage of formal education primarily concerned with providing basic education. This level provides the knowledge and develops the skills, attitudes, and values essential to personal development and necessary for living in and contributing to, to a developing society. So how do we apply this model in the elementary level? Before we answer that question, it is important to emphasize that this model is learner-centered, meaning the teachers are only to serve as the facilitators inside the classroom. Now, in applying the first process of this model, which is the activity in elementary education, the teacher has to make sure that the activity is activating and engaging. Since we are dealing with elementary students, it is important to have an activity that will activate their prior knowledge or schema. Also, if the learners find the activity relevant, it is easier to engage them in learning um, something new. So as a teacher, you can have games, video presentations, stories, questions, codes, and concept maps as your activities. These will trigger their schema, engage them, and help them establish connections. In the second component of the model, which is the analysis, the teacher has to process the previous activity so that the learners can establish the connection of their previous knowledge to the newer ones. Before actually presenting the whole lesson, the teacher has to let the students connect their previous knowledge first to the newer information they have learned. It can be through probing questions from lots to hots. The teacher can also facilitate the think, pair, and share so that learners can collaborate with their classmates. Or the popcorn share wherein random students can share their experiences in connection with the new lesson. Now, in the third component of this model, which is a abstraction, since we are dealing with elementary students, it is important that the teacher presents the lesson clearly. It is also best to provide ample examples so that learners will have a clear grasp of the lesson. The teacher can also ask the students for examples. It is also very necessary to regularly check on students' understanding through questions or through reiteration of concepts. Lastly, since most learners are easily distracted, the teachers are encouraged to provide a worksheet or, an, uh, or any activity that learners can work on during the discussion. Now, in the application, the teacher should be able to create an activity that is relevant to the learners. Learners must be able to apply the knowledge they have gained in different situations. Be it collaborative or an individual task, the students should be able to apply the knowledge they have gained in this part. 
Now, activities can be performance tasks, learning logs, real-world activities, demonstrations, worksheets, and group activities. Lastly, in the assessment part, the teacher should be able to assess what has been learned by the students. This should also determine the needs and gaps of understanding of the students. This should also be the avenue for the learners to assess their own learning. And of course, effective feedback is important so that learners know what to further develop. Now, assessments can be in the form of quizzes, exit slips, open and closed book tests, and oral tests. So, those are the ways on how you can apply the 4As or 5As model in the elementary level. And that's a wrap for the 4A and the 5A teaching models and their application in the classroom. We are excited to see you apply this in your future discussions. We also look forward into hearing from you, so don't forget to leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for listening to our PED Talk.